All right, I thought I'd have a discussion on uh, oops, on uh, TTL circuits um, and what their input and outputs look like. Um, I've talked about this before, and on my last video I was talking about uh, how you can kind of cheat things when you're running the old uh, TTLs because you don't need pull-up resistors like you do on CMOS. CMOS have very, very high input impedances, and they'll float to any old voltage, including halfway, which is a bad thing. You really need to either have them high or low to keep them happy. Um, but it, well, you didn't always used to be that way. Um, so let's just take a look at some of these old circuits. So I printed out here a um, um, data sheet from Texas Instrument on uh, one of the most simple devices, the uh, 7400, uh, uh, just a NAND, NAND gate, um, quadruple two input positive NAND gate. And um, let, let's take a look at what these um, circuits kind of look like. Um, so they're uh, very simple. Let me, uh, let me zoom in here so we can see this better. So, uh, we have three circuits here. Uh, this is the NAND gate, the A and the, a and the B inputs, and the uh, Y output, uh, VCC and ground. This is for a standard TTL version. Uh, this is the schematic for... Let's zoom out a bit. This is the schematic for the um, um, LS version. And this is the schematic for the uh, Schottky version, the S. S version. So let's go back to the to the first one here and let's see what's going on. Um, it has two inputs and it goes through a funny set of uh, transistors and then we have an output. Um, the uh, output is a push-pull, totem pole. Uh, so we have a transistor to ground um, so we, we have good current seeking capabilities for going pulling down to ground, but pulling up we don't. We have this 130 ohm resistor in series and we have a diode in there and uh, the um, voltage drop of uh, transistor and stuff. So it's, it's difficult to pull up hard with a TTL device and I've talked about that before, but this is, this is a good example. It's 130 ohm impedance here at the top. You can see that that's not going to get you there. Um, but we haven't really talked about the input. The inputs are very odd in these devices. There's some protection diodes for um, uh, make sure that you um, don't put things negative voltages on things, um, and for static electricity and things like that. But um, you really, really weren't worried about static electricity in the 7400. It wasn't going to do anything. But there are these protection diodes, and then um, you have this funny situation here. So. We're going to remember we're going to either put a high or a low input on these on these things. So if we put a low, let's just say we start with a low low. A and B are both low. That means that we're going to turn on this transistor. There's a 4K resistor here in the base. And that 4K will go through the emitter and down to ground. And it will turn this transistor on. And uh, it will do things over here. Okay, we're not going to worry about that. We just want to care about what happens on the input. What does it take to, to make this thing operate? If it's low, we see how it operates. And then if it's high, well then it's not going to turn on uh, turn on this transistor. And this transistor has two um, uh, uh, devices here. So um, if one of them's low, that will turn it on. If, the, if either one of them is low, it'll turn this on. Remember, this is a NAND gate, so both inputs have to be high for it to output a low on the output. So, which means these both have to be high, which means that this transistor will finally be off. Um, either one of these emitters can cause this transistor to turn on, so they both have to be high on the input so that this transistor is turned off. And, um, if you float the input, well, what happens? Well, it's a bit complicated. Um, it it, it uh, has this uh, negative bias here, so nothing going on with these diodes. So if it's just floating, what happens to this voltage? Well, um, there'll be a, a diode drop, 
in the uh, base emitter junction and then there'll be a pull up. So basically um, the inputs are pulled up with a 4K resistor with a diode drop in there. So it's not going to pull it all the way up, but it'll pull it up to within a diode drop of VCC with a 4K impedance. Um, there's no impedance to ground, but there is an impedance to high. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit unusual. And when they are being driven low, you are putting through a bit of current, right? 4K, 5 volts. You, you just take a just take a bit of current to turn to turn this thing on. Um, uh, when this transistor is 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 on, then 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 this guy will be on, and uh, it will uh, turn uh, this one on. It will go low. So. That's why it's inverted. On, on gives you a low. So high, high, off, on, on, right? You get it. Um, so um, that's the input impedance is a funny, a funny thing in TTL, and you can float them because they will go up to VCC or within a diode drop of VCC 4K resistor. So let's take a look at the LS version. Uh, the LS version is a bit is a bit odd. Um, we look at the input. We have uh, some fancier uh, Schottky diodes now. Uh, so we have some fancier diodes. We have some diode switching here. So instead of using a double emitter transistor, we're just going to use a diode OR gate. Um, so either A can be low or B can be low uh, to create this node to be low, which will turn off this transistor. Um, the output is a little bit different. The output has a 120 ohm resistor instead of a 130 ohm resistor, and it doesn't have that funny diode in here. Um, but it, it it has a shocky transistor. It it's it's a bit funny. But anyway, it's kind of the same thing. You can't you can pull down very easily, but you can't really pull up good because of this 120 ohm. It'll be a little higher voltage because there's not an extra diode in there, so it will pull it up a little bit further. And then let's take a look at the S version. I've never looked at an S version before. I've never really designed with S. Um, now S is so it can go faster. What does it mean to go faster? It means it's going to draw more current. Um, that's the way you need to pump more power into the thing to go faster. And we can see here that the output impedance is 50 ohms now instead of 130, 120. It's now 50 ohms. We still have the totem pole output. Um, so we don't get all the way to VCC, but we we can pull it pretty hard with a with a with a 50 50 ohm resistor now, and the input um, again is also higher current instead of a 4K resistor uh, in the case uh, 4 4K resistor in the case of TTL, and I didn't mention it, but it's a it's a 20K resistor in LS. That's why it's it's low power. It only it only requires a very small amount of current now to pull things on the input, um, which will give you better um, fan out as well um, of parts if you care about that but um, 20k uh, is the impedance here so uh, these lines still can be floated and they'll be pulled up with a 20k resistor um, here in the uh, S version we see that it's being pulled up with a 2.8k um, which is uh, more than, than, and than the other two so again higher currents faster well, that's what the S is all about it's basically the same circuit just higher currents, makes it go faster, draws more current, gets hotter, but goes faster. Anyway, so I think that gives uh, gives you some idea of uh, the inputs um, and outputs of TTL. It's a bit strange, nobody uses it anymore, but if you're going to be building um, or, or, or renovating old equipment, you have to know about this, because um, it is different and the circuits uh, uh, they get away with murder, murder sometimes, right? You, you can float inputs, um, you can do kind of strange things on inputs, um, and there there is some voltage limitations. Uh, and um, in general, you actually have to supply quite a bit of current uh, on the input pins of devices, so that's also of a concern. I hope that helps.